We learn by screwing up, right? So today I'm gonna walk you through my 2021 hunting season and my biggest lessons learned. Hey, what's up? It's Josh from the Dialed In Hunter. My hunting season is officially over. It is February right now. Uh, finished up last month with January archery coos deer and javelina. Had a great month. Killed a great buck. Doubled up on javelina with my brother. Um, look for a film in the future on that. It's going to be pretty sweet. Um, today, though, man, I wanted to like go through uh, my whole 2021 season and kind of look back on some of the lessons learned, you know, like, like I said, in the beginning of this, we get better by screwing up. Um, failures in my opinion are, aren't necessarily a negative thing. They're really pieces to the puzzle, right? So they're, they are a good thing. They're pieces of the puzzle that you need to see the whole picture. So I try to look back on these things like areas where I fell short and really try to apply that stuff to, uh, to next time. The first big lesson that comes to mind is uh, staying in my shot sequence. So I was on a backpack hunt in Utah, chasing high country mule deer. It was an epic hunt with my good friend, Eric. Uh, that hunt is on YouTube, so you can watch that all go down. But like we were on bucks pretty much every day, you know, comes down to the last day. We're tired. We've been grinding. Um, and sure enough, I find a buck bedded, uh, on the last evening. And so this is the last hoorah, right? I got to make a big loop around, come in on top of them, did everything right. Got up above this buck and sat on him for over an hour. Um, and I just didn't have a shot. He was bedded on the other side of a big tree. So all I could see was his antlers and how the terrain was laid out. I just couldn't get a different angle on him. So um, long story short, man, uh, Buck ends up getting up, walks out, uh, just like he's supposed to broadside, steep downhill shot, 65 yards. Um, I felt really comfortable with that. I shoot that a lot back home here, shoot way further than that, uh, with confidence and, uh, pulled back on him, sent the arrow and missed wide right. And, I, I couldn't believe what happened that, I mean, the arrow I've missed deer above and below before, but never to the side. Um, deer runs out of my life and I'm sitting there, you know, super disappointed. So, um, after recreating the shot, uh, sitting there on the mountain, I realized that I didn't let level my bubble. Um, <laughs> you know, big bucks make you do dumb stuff sometimes. Right. And it just, I think it was the waiting, you know, for the buck to stand up all that anticipation. It was the last evening. You know what I mean? It was like success was right there, you know, and, uh, just forgot what I was doing. You know, it got out of my own head. Um, so didn't level my bow. I realized that I was way canted to the right. Meaning for those of you out there that know how a bow works, whichever way you can't, if you can't to the right, your arrow's going to miss right. You can't to the left, your arrow's going to miss left. Well, in really steep country like this, super downhill, you, you, you need to make sure your third axis is on point. I had mine checked right before I left. I knew it was good, but you essentially need to cant into the hill. Um, and it feels super unnatural to do that. Um, but after when I did recreate the shot, I, I <laughs> paid attention to my bubble level and I was like, oh man, that that is not at all how that last shot felt and um it made sense you know i i was canted way to the right and missed way right so buck walked out of my well i should say ran out of my life and i did the lonely walk of shame back to meet up with eric you know and and then packed out the next day so super hard lesson learned man but one that i am definitely going to remember the next time i'm in the high country The next lesson that comes to mind for me, uh, 
brings me back to Idaho. I was on a spring bear hunt, um, packed in solo and hadn't seen anything for, for a few days. And then, well, I should say I saw some bears, but I didn't have shot, any shot opportunities. Just didn't work out, you know? Um, but on, I think it was on the fifth day I'm back there and sitting on this outcropping and all of a sudden I look down and there's a bear within rifle range feeding right beneath me. And I just, you know, I, I was quick to react, grabbed my rifle, dialed the scope, did all this stuff, fiddled around with trying to get steady and everything like that, shot and I missed. Um, come to find out after that, that I misdialed my scope for some reason. I don't have all of the uh, MOA calculations memorized. They're literally on my rifle. So like, it's all right there. I don't have to memorize it. And for some reason, I put the wrong calculation onto my scope in my, on my turret and I dialed way too high and shot over the bear. What I'm trying to get at with all that is when you're in the heat of the moment like that, we have a tendency to think that um, we, we have way less time than we actually do. Like the animal's gonna get away, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, and in all reality, the bear was just sitting there feeding. He had no idea I was there. I had all the time in the world to try to get set up, make sure everything was good, breathe and execute a nice steady shot. And I didn't do that because I rushed. Um, and the rushing not only caused me to make a hasty shot, but it caused me to misdial my scope. You know what I mean? Like you work hard on these, on these hunts, especially these rugged backcountry hunts. And then when opportunity is sitting in front of you, um, man, you better be able to, to uh, perform under the pressure, right? Um, so that's something I always try to tell myself, obviously, um, it's easier said than done, but you always usually have more time than you think in any given situation. Take a second, make sure things are good, let it rip. So after that, I came home to Arizona and I had a fall bear hunt here and that same level of thinking i had that lesson that i learned in idaho stuck in my brain you know and i was like man if i you know we get an opportunity i'm gonna just really make sure calm myself down you know what i mean especially like look at the animal you can tell like if the animal's not running away it's just feeding you have time okay especially it's not thick timber or anything like that where shot opportunities are only so far and few between um so we go in, I go into Arizona and uh, at the end of the hunt, found this big giant boar, you know what I mean? Biggest bear I think I've ever killed. I don't know if I'll ever kill one that big again in my life, but um, spent my time on this bear, you know, got laid down, got a good rest. I remember there was quite a few times where I was like, nope, that's not right. I don't feel right. And, and I double checked my turret, obviously like a billion times to make sure that I was at the right, the right, the right MOA calculation. Um, and ended up making an absolutely perfect shot on that bear because of that screw up back in Idaho. You know, it's just like, it's just an example of learning from your mistakes. Um, fortunately I was able to do it in the same year. So, um, yeah, I walked away with a really great bear. You can watch that film actually, it's called Endearment. Uh, I'll try to drop a link below. Another thing that comes to mind is uh, never ever taking a shortcut. Okay, what I mean by that, this is, this is really geared, uh, how I'm gonna look at this is really from a bow hunter standpoint. Um, in the past, I've always noticed like, when you're spot and stock hunting, especially like you glass something up, say you got a deer or an elk or something bedded down there, you're sitting there trying to calculate which route to go and which route is the best. And they're usually what you end up with is a few different, um, a few different routes to take. And from what I've noticed is that one of those routes is usually a lot longer than the other one. But it's the one where you say in your mind, you're like, I know if I do that, then I'm not, I have the highest chance of success. The other route is usually shorter. Um, and it's one of those where you sit there and you're like, I mean, we should be fine. 
Okay, so uh, we had one of these uh, situations in Idaho. I was on elk hunt with a really good buddy, Curtis, and uh, had this these two bulls glassed up. They were bedded, and, and we're looking at the terrain, and we're like, man, if we go up around this ridge, I think we're going to have the best chance of success, but it was a much longer route, much more strenuous hike. Like, man, what if we just cut through this timber and, and, and you know, kind of got up so on the side of them so we didn't have to wrap around the lip of this basin so that's what we did we ended up taking the shorter route and uh because of that the bulls ended up moving uh unbeknownst to us and we ended up right below them which inevitably got us winded had we taken the longer route the more strenuous one we would have been fine. Not saying we would have gotten a shot, but they definitely wouldn't have winded us. We would have had a better shot at coming around and then side hilling into these bulls. Um, but that's not what we did, you know, and it was one of those things where you look back every single time I try to take a shortcut when I'm spot and sock bow hunting, it usually never works out. You, so just do the thing that you know is the best chance of success. Don't sit there and be like, well, I mean, the wind should be good right here, but I know the wind's going to be good over here. Go do the thing over here. Just go do that, and your chances of success are going to be much higher. Uh, that's been my experience, and I'm definitely going to remember that the next time I'm chasing elk in Idaho. So we are surrounded by media, especially in this day and age, right? Like, And, and hunting media in, in particular... Um, there's a lot of influence that gets put out there, right? Like there's a lot of influence to use certain gear items and influence to hunt a certain way. I do, I do it too. I put out gear reviews and stuff like that, but, and it's all great, but it's, it's meant for education. You know, it's not hardline rules though. Okay. So several times this past season, I found myself like using certain gear items that I thought were the things that I was supposed to be using, right? Just because of influence from other people. But taking a step back, I look at it and I'm like, wait a minute, this over here is what has always worked the best for me, not this. You know, this over here has been giving me issues, right? So um, taking a step back and be like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use what works for me personally and not worrying about what other people think about that i think there's a lot of value there and, and the same can be said about hunting tactics you know don't feel like like elk hunting for instance like don't feel like um just because so and so goes out and bugles 200 times in a day that that's how you need to elk hunt you need to elk hunt the way you are most comfortable elk hunting okay for me i am i'm not a caller like i'm not like i can i've called in bulls here and there but like i'm most comfortable glassing up elk and then trying to stalk into them do the things that work best for you don't worry about what other people think and you're gonna see more success like that i am a planner uh, anybody that knows me knows that I'm always like trying to plan things out well in advance. I'm trying to plan backup plans before there's any reason to think about backup plans. This past year hunting elk in Arizona, um, I didn't do that as much as I should have. Okay. And I found myself sitting there without a backup plan to my backup plan, if that makes sense. Uh, basically, you know, it was just hunting pressure. You know what I mean? Like I, um was in the favorite spot of mine and and you know was on this bull but then all of a sudden hunting pressure comes in and now the bull's nowhere to be found and i don't know where to go now i have one more backup plan after that so i go over there and come to find out that area is crawling with hunters um and then there i am sitting on the road uh before sunup wondering what to do look trying to look at my maps and pick out new spots last minute um, that's not a place you want to be, man. So like the, the, the lesson here is you need to have backup plans on backup plans on backup plans, you know, doesn't mean you're going to revert to plan D or anything like that, but having those things in place, having, you know, five or six areas picked out that 
you've studied really well on a map, you know how to get there like access wise, like how to like what roads take you to, to these areas, the trails that you need to hike in, or if you're going to hike cross country, knowing where to cut in off the road, like having all this stuff figured out ahead of time is going to save you so much time during hunting season. You don't want to be like sitting there fiddling around with your phone, wondering what to do during hunting season. We wait all year for this, right? Like we're, we sit, we're salivating over this all year waiting for opening day. And then when that day comes, knowing what you're going to do is just going to make for a smoother hunt. So have backup plans on backup plans on backup plans. So the last biggest lesson for me of 2021 hunting season is something that I feel like I take little by little uh, year after year, and, and that's to enjoy the entire process. Um, there's been times in the past where I've I've really uh, got caught up in my own head and, and been too serious, you know, like taking taking the hunt too serious, and then I find myself not having fun, and you know, this like this thing that I've looked forward to all year long. I'm finally out on this epic adventure, and I'm sitting there, you know, pouting. You know, it's like what, like that's that's just not right. You know what I mean? Like it is a gift just to have the physical ability to go to pick up a bow and go live in the mountains for a week, regardless if you shoot a deer, you know, like one, one hunt in particular that really comes to mind with this is a few years back, I was out on a high country mule deer hunt with my brother in Colorado. And, uh, you know, it was like day five and we were, you know, not having fun. We were bickering, you know, like just over stupid stuff that didn't matter at all this trip that that we planned and got psyched for and you know my brother and I we don't get to spend a lot of time together anymore life happens right and and now we're finally spending a week together in the mountains in this incredible looking country um seeing giant mule deer bucks you know it it, it was just well like what's to complain about nothing you know and um our goal I remember that night of day five, we, we we were kind of, we kind of had like a like an awakening, if you would, you know. And we were like, you know what? I'm sick of this. You know, like tomorrow, dude. My number one goal is I just want to wake up and have fun. You know, that's it. And um, we and if we shoot a deer, cool. If not, we're gonna tell some funny jokes and and eat some good food, and it's gonna be great. Um, I shot a deer the next day. You know, so. Um, Remember why you're out there, man. You know, like that's something that I have to do. I get to do this a lot and I still have to remind myself like, you love to do this. You asked to be here. Um, if you're having a tough hunt, hey, some t tough hunts happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hunting pressure happens. Lack of animals happens. It's all part of it, you know, so embrace it. You know, like it's just going to make you better in the end. So. That's my last big takeaway. Enjoy the entire process from front to back. So that's gonna do it for my biggest lessons of 2021. Uh, hopefully you walked away with a little bit of perspective to go into 2022 with. I def I know I definitely did. Um, I wanna know what you have planned this year, man. Like we're in the kind of like the uh, tag application season right now. So some of our some of our adventures are kind of up to the draw gods at this point, but I, I have gotten some tags so far. I've got a, I've got two uh, bear tags in Idaho that I'm psyched about. I drew a spring bear tag here in Arizona that I'm really pumped about. Um, so drop your, your, your adventures that you're stoked for down below. I want to know what hunts you're going on or what hunts you're, you're hoping to get. Um, if you like the video, please hit thumbs up. If you like the channel, please hit subscribe. And until next time, stay safe out there. We'll